Welcome back. We're doing another video. We're in the same spot. But it's another episode of I Would Like to Have a Conversation. And this one's about the five minute rule. Where Todd and I talk about how when we want to do something or we coach people on how to do something, we use the five minute rule of like, what's the five minute version of this that you can do right now? Just so you can get it done. You know how I do that with you guys? Yeah. Where we try and get things done quickly. You're cold, aren't you, Ruby? <laughs> <laughs> Are you cold, Theo? No. Oh, yeah. What about you, Simon? Anyway, <laughs> enjoy the episode while well, I get some clothes on him. See ya! Back to I Would Like To Have A Conversation. And back with Todd. And this is round six. And today, we want to go a little bit deeper into this idea of the, well, this is the five-minute rule. And something that Todd and I use with the dads we work with. I always use it with everybody and I think I'll jump off and say like the obvious thing like the elephant in the room with the five minute rule to start making those changes you want is that it's just like it's the no brainer kind of option usually I, I don't know how you do it Todd, but usually the way I go through it is like alright so this is the thing we've got to do let's say I'm gonna, I want to start training I start finding time to train. And I'm like, cool, how often do you think you can train every day for the next seven days? I always do that. I'm like, it has to be every day because I want to see like a true consistent pattern of habits. And no matter what they tell me, <laughs> literally every time, it's like, I could probably do 30 minutes every day. I'm like, cool, give me five. And they're like, ah, oh, but I can do 30. I'm like, well, do it if you can. But it's we're going to count it as a tick if it's five. Just to allow that randomness of life to not derail whatever it is they're working on does that kind of make sense yeah absolutely so, and i think you know, with being an aspect of, of how you utilize it curious when when you say that to them what is what are you often like getting back what is what is their feedback even though they say i can do 30 minutes a day um, would you say, hey, just just five is going to tick off the box? Where does that conversation go? I'm curious. It's like there's a thing like called simplicity bias that I've got like learning about the last two years looking into it. And if it seems too simple on paper, people will just immediately dismiss it. So there's always sort of like kickback. And like, I can do more. I can do more. I'm like, go for it. Do more. I just need five. So it's kind of like a, I use it myself still. I still have things in there, like five minutes of this, five minutes of that, five minutes of that. So if ever I get really, really cooked or my sleep patterns are really bad, which is typically pretty normal. Um, the kids are sick, cats away. Like cat was away for the last two days in Melbourne and I've got to be more available for the kids. I just, have this five minute thing as like a safety net and that's the way i look at it it's like it's to catch you when shit goes really really bad and you can still show up and win the day just to teach the brain that you're still showing up as that person you want to be and doing the actions of the things you need to do and like i will fully admit like if you if you want to get ready for a race or get like crazy crazy strong for something like a specific event, five minutes is probably not going to cut it, but that's not what we're kind of talking about with this. Like, well, we're like this podcast episode is probably more to the person who feels like they're stuck in a rut. They're not really doing anything. They're wondering how to get started. Uh, they could be ooh, like super motivated. And that's where that whole, like, oh, I can do 30 minutes every day. I can do an hour every day. It's like, cool. Use that as like a stretch goal. And then the five minutes is the, the minimum I need, which sounds really weird. But once you start learning how your body works, it can take as little as five minutes. Like that, that 30 day strength program I talk about, I did that for 60 days. And I'm, my pull ups went from like maybe five out of battle to like 15. And I did use that to get ready for a Spartan race. So I did all of my running. 
and use the five minutes a day for the strength part. And that was it. So it's there. there. So swinging it back around, often when things look really, really simple on paper, we dismiss it and go for the more complex thing because it looks more, it feels like it would work. It's like, oh, this is complex. This has to work. And something like BG says from King's Crew all the time is like, success is simplicity and consistency. And oftentimes boredom is the key to success. So I don't know when you say five minutes, what kickback do you get? That's the kickback. Oh yeah. They're like, this seems too easy. I'm like, yeah, it's meant to be. Yeah. Well, I think in the past, the parent is I may have like pushed people that I've had to pull back on and didn't think I was like pushing them. Right. Um, I don't mean that like I wasn't throwing everything at them, but making, we weren't making small enough changes. And so now, um, conversation that I do have with people, I, I don't, I, I do get a little bit of what you had shared. Hey, I think I can do more. I can do this. And then at the end of the week, they may have five minutes per day done, but it was one, it was one workout, mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, it were, you know, um, if that were to spread over the course of the week. Um, so I don't, it's not so much kickback. It's, it's more, um, it's more so like people are in agreement and, and it's being able to find those five, those five minutes somewhere. Um, and, and then helping them realize that this can be going back to one, this is about, yeah, maybe the five minutes isn't to prepare you for a race, but this, all of this is really laying a, a beautiful foundation for that decision to pop up in the near future. And what I mean by that is, is you don't realize what can happen in six months when you implement this type of rule, whether it is mm. for training, whether it is for gym. Mm. One of my favorite things is when, and it's happened with a few clients about we, uh, month four, um, or month five, six, get this message of I'm ready to do something more. And one of the things that like we had talked about with the client, um, and one that I'm thinking of in particular, he had this goal to get back to, and he, he thought he wasn't going to be able to do it at all, but he wanted to get back to r racing like four wheelers or ATVs. And it was mm. passionate. So he just, he, he fell out of it and didn't take care of himself. About week, f or excuse me, five, all of a sudden <laughs> we went, we went from like, like things hurt. I don't want to train, you know, like not as much I don't want to train but you know i'm having difficulty training and difficulty working around some of like my ailments to five minutes in uh i'm ready to get back on an atv like think i'm ready and i was like well you know we'll see so uh, that was a little bit of a tangent but i think it's such a beautiful foundation that this will build in order for something like that to occur in the future and i know we've also spoken about that that freedom that we want to have um but yeah, the I don't get much pushback on it, um, especially when we go about explaining things from your life being full and being able yeah. to use that to gently push out and bring more more, and it's gonna drive you towards your goal. Just so you know, your mic keeps cutting in and out a little bit too. Oh. Weirdly, but yeah, I think. It's kind of cool because I, I look at, we, yeah, the five minutes is like micro changes, right? Like you're swapping this for that. You're doing five minutes a little bit here, a little bit there. And I'll use that idea of the safety net. If you have a safety net that takes five minutes a day, that will guarantee you'll get to the goal eventually. It makes it like a no brainer to sort of get in and start doing stuff. That's the way I kind of set it up is like, okay, so if we can do this on the worst day and it's still going to get you to your goal, it's going to work. You can do as much and as all the randomness and cool stuff as you like, but I'm more worried about what are you going to do on your worst days? So like I talk about the, like the traffic light system and the red light. Yeah. I'll call it yellow light, but it's amber. I know red, yellow light and green light. Um, my thing is always like, Nearly everybody 
lives in the yellow, like especially parents, we are literally always in the yellow. And then when it gets really, really stressful, we're in the red and we're very rarely ever in the green light. Like in my, like Dan, John come up with this concept and Josh Hillis sort of did as well. And I'll just riffed on it. The Dan, John reckons like, it's like two weeks a year we're in the green light. And he even says that for athletes, but the green light is kind of, everything's perfect. You got no stress. You're on holidays. People are cooking your food. You got a massage, pe- massage, masseuse there, massage people. That's really technical. Um, everything is taken care of. So you can do all the things. And then yellow lights, like typical day to day stress, taking the kids to school, doing, being a taxi, working, just juggling busy parent life. And then red lights, like your kids are sick, you got COVID, you crash your car, you move in house, you just got a newborn baby, like they're red lights. And I think what a lot of people seek to get where they want to go is green light stuff, stuff that works only when you are a green light. And that's why it works for a little bit of time. And then all that other responsibilities and everything that happens that you put aside while you're chasing this green light system program, whatever, this stuff comes crashing back in and that's when you fall off the wagon. And my big thing was like, how do we get people to do stuff on their absolute worst days? And that's where the five minute rule come from. Like if you can get results with this five minutes a day thing, and then also, which we can go into a minute, it creates a better question, but if you get results in five minutes a day towards that goal, like eventually you're going to get there and it allows you to stretch and do more when you want to, but your fallback plan is always, I can still do five minutes. It just creates proof in your brain that you can show up and be that person you want to be. Instead of like, if it's like a, an hour a day or two hour a day program, which they are out there for parents, two hour a day program and like crazy, crazy ass diet. When you're doing it, you're like, yes, I'm being this person I'm this high performance dad. And then you fall off the wagon and you just feel shit about yourself because you can't do the two hours. You, you do an hour 45 and you're like, I feel short. I didn't make it. And then it just creates this pattern in your head, which is not what you want. Telling the story that, yeah, you, you didn't make it. So, yeah, I think it's like that traffic light system. When I do explain to people that tends to help the most, it's like, this is why we do it. I want you to show up here. Like I'm more interested in coaching you through red and yellow. Green lights are, that's easy. If you're a green light, just get anything. Everything works. You got the capacity to do it. It's more, I'm more interested in working with people and helping people through the red and yellow light scenarios. What do you, what about you? You you brought up, I I was going to ask a question about you, you brought up the point of these two hour programs and people feeling like a failure if they don't get to, you know, if they got to an hour 45 In, in my experience. I like to start off a lot of my coaching calls with wins. I want to establish, like, I want to get people into that routine, talking about what's going on, what's going well. And I find that there are either two responses. Uh, there's rarely this excited, like, even, even after I pull it out of them that they're crushing it, I rarely get this, like, things are going so well because they're able to pull out these positive things I I get this kind of like, oh, well, yeah, this is going well. I felt like I stayed on like this, but, and this big but comes in. Mm. And and I guess I'm just tying it back to this, like, whole psychological thing that, like, it's, I don't know if you, it's really, really hard, at least with the people I've worked with, to help them see their wins and help them understand like what these wins are whether they're scale or non-scale victories and i think that this and i believe that this five minute rule is going to help um kind of solidify that in their brain so they can start looking at each day as a win, um when they get to this five minutes and then you know i think we'll talk about later like how the five minute kind of expands and grows but i have a question in there and I- on your end, if you found 
something similar or if you if you share with the people ahead of time what what the rule is and what to expect that these deposits for them um help them shift their their mindset immediately or do you find that that, that takes time uh, with the five minute rule as well does that question make sense yeah um It's interesting you sort of talked about the butt thing. I'll, I want to swing back around to that later. So we'll talk about like a tool that I got taught to remove the butts from your life, which was super interesting. But the, uh, but the, the, <laughs> I think it's like, I call it suck town. It's almost like you have to be a resident of suck town to know why the five minute rule works. Like when you are in the suck and everything's really, really hard and it's really, really challenging. Your life is absolutely chockers and things are just crazy. You're literally just surviving every day, just getting through. That's, I think when there's more buy-in and that's why when I'm like, so this is the idea of like, I used to reduce it down to this five minutes and that was it. I never gave them options. I allowed them to do whatever they want, but I never gave the option. And then I was sort of thinking there was I'm just, just had a little notification that the video is stored. Anyway, I was sort of thinking that the, the people need a reason to flex and to move bigger. So we always talk about atomic habits, right? And his is the two minute rule. And I just use five minutes because that just makes more sense. There's like a like I would say a progression from that done by a different author called uh, author called elastic habits. And in it, he's got like the, the mini pro elite wins. And when I found that, that's where I got better buying. I was like, cool. So we know the mini is our five minute version of everything. Like that, that's it. Like this is the five minute version. It's going to allow you to achieve the goal. You can put this in any category you want. You create this mini version. That's five minutes long. That is going to achieve the goal no matter what, if you do it long enough. And then pro, playing, playing at a pro level is like the yellow light. So you expand on it and you stretch a little bit and it should be a little bit like a little bit challenging, but not too crazy. You can still do it at least five out of seven days. And then the elite is like the big stretch. This is what changed for the days. When I put this in, they love the idea of the elite goal. They're like, I want to go for that elite. I'm like, cool, but as long as you come back and do the mini tomorrow. If you go elite and you disappear for three days, we we'll just defeat the purpose of what we're doing. So the rule of thumb I kind of put in place was like, you can have like, generally it's like two elites a, a week. If you get three or four, I'm like, that's not an elite, that's a pro. Let's move that to the pro category and let's make a bigger stretch goal. So they can slide up and down as much as they need to. And I think that created more of that idea of what next. So if they dig do the five minutes, they're like, can I do more? And at first I used to say like, cause I used to, I always believe that our, as parents, our health and fitness stuff should sit in behind our family and our wealth career, whatever. And then it's like health and fitness cause it'll make the rest of it better anyway. So I was always like, once you've done the thing, go hang out with your kids or go chill out and read a book or something like that. Just use that extra time you've got for stuff you enjoy doing. And then I was kind of spinning it around and looking at myself, like, what would I do if I had more time? And I was like, I would train because it's literally what I love doing. So I was like, well, there's probably others out there that want the same. So that mini pro elite version. If you want to get the book, Elastic Habits, it literally goes through how to score it and everything. It turns your life into kind of like a video game where you're constantly just trying to claim points and level yourself up and give yourself rewards. It's even got like a sheet you can put on the wall and fill out. It's super cool. And it was just like a light bulb moment where it was like, we've talked about this before off the call, where it's like, cool, this is what we're doing. This is the five minute thing. This is what you should expect from this five minute thing. This is what will happen next. So it was like giving them an option to move on to, and they knew exactly where they could, what they could do. 
because that was probably, I guess, the biggest frustration for people with the five minute rule. It's like, cool, once they knock over the five minutes, then what? And I was like, go do whatever you want to do. But some people don't like that. Yeah. It's like they're scared of boredom, which we've talked about on other episodes, but they, in the sense of what we do and helping people get in shape, look better naked, hell yeah, fitness, all that kind of stuff. They want that next step. Even if they can't get it every time, they know they've got somewhere else that they can stretch to. I don't know if that answers your question, but I think it does. <laughs> Not even sure if I remember the question. <laughs> yeah no, but it's um, like, I was thinking about that but so I'll get this out real quick there was the guys I worked with on these kind of tools called Habitry Stephen Ledbetter he was like a protege of um, Dan John he now works as far as I know he now works in Silicon Valley and helps people create really habitual type apps which is kind of interesting but when I worked with him he had this rule when he was helping us become habit coaches and helping people with guidance and making change that we weren't allowed to use the word, but, or to use anything else, but the word, but like in our responses and in years, as soon as you put a but in there, they forget everything you said beforehand and I only remember the stuff that you say after the, but, so it works in our brain too. So I've started, not started, I've been doing this for a while. When I say things and then put a butt in there, I try and catch it and change it to something else as quick as I can, just so it doesn't dismiss everything I said beforehand. Then my brain goes, eh, whatever. So I thought I'd throw that in there because it was like such a simple tweak. Like I use it with the kids. I try my hardest never to say butt. Like so, it's really challenging. Like, I, really it's changed. such a battle. And it's just like a game for myself at the moment and cat will catch me when i'll go to say something and i'll just sort of look at the, to the roof before i say it and it's causing me to have a pause moment which makes me probably say something that's more intuitive than what i was going to say <laughs> the, but but the it's just it's like i thought i'd throw it in there because it's like we're talking about this five minute rule because it's such a micro step for anyone out there, if you butt yourself a lot, I'm going to do this, but I have this. I'm going to do this, but I want to do that. I'm going to do this, but I've got that. Change it. Take away the but. And just in that sense, just change, put an end. I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to do this and that. And that will be like a quick change. That will change, rewire your brain and make it easier to start doing stuff. But I just wanted to throw it in there really quickly because... <laughs> When you were talking about the butt, I was like, yeah, it's such a, it's such a small word that has such a big impact. Huge impact. Now, uh, say, say we're, we're moving along a couple weeks, a couple months into you using the five minute rule. Um, how to like, and I know you spoke briefly on how, how this can expand with those, um, those goals. Uh, you know, so if they have their goals and they have those tiered goals, then after this five minutes, they can go on and do this. But I'm curious how, how do you see the five minute rule, like expand and evolve for, for the majority of your clients? Like if you could share how um, you see how that grows into somebody, you know, maybe consistently training down the, down the road for, you know, 30 to 45 minutes, uh, three days a week, you know, nothing that, you know, something that will get them, you know, phenomenal results, but like doesn't have to be, you know, pulling them away. So can you just expand on how, how that, that looks as far as like most people? Uh, it's very unique to the person, but I would almost think like, it's like stacking. Yeah. You know how we say stacking wins. It's like stacking five minutes on top of five minutes on top of five minutes. And it's kind of, I use the idea of, I use myself an example, because this will make probably make more sense. Like I, whenever I cop a big injury or I get COVID or whatever it's going around at the moment, 
I revert back to the five minutes straight away. I swipe the, the slate gets wiped clean, all my PRs or everything gets taken out. I start at zero, I start five minutes a day. And this is just for me, not wanting to chase back quickly to where I was before and just burning out and getting sick again. So it's like, go back to five minutes and build up and just stack. And I can always do more than five, but my fallback is like, I feel shit again, I'm gonna go back to five. So I start stacking. Because when you when you get sick in the sense of like a big injury or say like the original COVID smash, I was out for like two weeks. And if I wanted to go back to where I was, where I was training for an hour a day, that's a big jump. Two weeks of nothing back to an hour a day is just a big bridge you got to try and build. So my idea is like go back to five and allow yourself to collect wins again. And then keep adding, like stacking five minutes on top of five minutes. So as a rough example, I had COVID and then like two weeks, like a week later, I had to go run a Spartan race and it absolutely destroyed me. And then I was cooked for like two to three weeks. So I started, everything started back at zero, stacked five minutes, did that for a week. And a couple of days I did a little bit more, but it was mainly five. And then I went to 10 minutes. And I went to 15 minutes and I went to 20 minutes and I would keep stacking until I found a friction point. And the friction point is different for everybody. It's like, where is that point where it's getting harder to show up for the thing? Like it's taking more willpower juice than you want to use for whatever it is you're doing. Sometimes you are happy using lots of willpower to show up for say training. But I'm very much in the frame of mind that I want to use all my willpower for family life and kids and making sure I do all the things I need to do there and not use all my willpower to show up and do stuff that is for me and it's enjoyable anyway. So it's funny, like I love training like massively and my friction point is 45 minutes. So I'll use that stacking and just stacking five minutes until I get to that friction point. And sometimes it's at 20 and I'll stay there for a couple of weeks. Where as long as I get past 20, I'm like, cool. But thinking of trying to go to 40 minutes is like, hmm. So I stack to that 45 minute mark right now. Like I can train to 45 minutes anytime. Like even I picked the kids up from school. They were talking to their um, Poppy John, my dad, on Zoom in here. And I was out there training in the afternoon, which I never do because I'm cooked by the time I get to the afternoon. And I was out there and I just trained for... 45 minutes, no worries. Just while the kids are on the Zoom. It was like easy. So that's me personally. So for other people, it's like, we just stack these little five minute habits until there's a friction point. And then I think that's the important part. As soon as you find that, like, whoa, this is, it's gonna be pretty hard to fit this in. That's your friction point. So you make that your new baseline because it's easy to show up for. And you're gonna be able to keep doing it because it doesn't take willpower to do. So you're not draining your battery to show up for a thing that's actually going to increase your battery's capacity and use willpower in other areas. I think that's where this is all outside. Like if you're training for an event, there's going to be things that you're going to have to do for the event. And usually it's the motivation of finishing that event is what allows you to do it. So you're not kind of using willpower. It's just, you're like, I've got to do really well at this thing. But if you're just training to like look better naked, which is like, kind of what everyone kind of wants. They want to feel good in their skin. Like just stacking and building those habits or skills or whatever it is at five minute increments to lose that friction point and just stay just a little bit below that friction point for a while and space might open up again. And it's funny, like it's still 45 minutes for me. Like I trained the other day for an hour and I got to the 40 minute mark. I'm like, oh, I'm ready to pull up stumps in five minutes. And I had like a couple more circuits of the, to do with the running. I was like, oh, and those last 15 was a battle. But in that sense, I had, that was a mindset goal for me to be able to basically do hard running for the whatever long hour 35 soccer is. But yeah, I think. It's kind of like, yeah, like I said, it's stacking to a friction point. And friction is like, yeah, there's kickback mentally from yourself. 
kickback from your family. Like I think the environment. Yeah, like which isn't a ba- I don't see it as a bad thing. Like I get like you have those conversations and stuff, but <laughs> like I would chain for an ultra when Kat was pregnant with Ruby. I signed up for an ultra and I was doing like two hour workouts a day and six hours on the weekend. And she let me do it. But she's after that, she's like, you're never doing that again until the kids leave home. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, that's fair enough. I felt when I was in it, I didn't notice it. But then I was like looking at my training logs. I was like, holy shit. I was like 15 hours a week. I was training 15 hours a week. I was away from helping her with the kids. Right. So anyway, I think stacking. Yeah. Like we talk about habit stacking. Everyone talks about habit stacking, but I think letting go of expectation of what you think you should be doing every day. And even what the media tells us we should be doing every day. Like it's cool. Like that's there. But if you start stacking five minutes and you can only get to 20, and you're like, I, f- I, f- I feel like I literally can't do any more. We can always, t- <laughs> you, we can always challenge that as coaches. We're like, yeah, I can, you could, but right. in your head, it's your head anyway. Like in your head, if there's a friction point at 20, that's it. 20 is a number. Now I'm curious, and I'm sure the, the listeners are, are curious too. We talked about this with training. How, mm. how do you approach this with, with, uh, like with nutrition or um, because I can see how it fits in with like some of the mindset stuff whether we're asking people to do some breath work journaling um, maybe meditation sitting in silence but I'm curious how 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 this applies to the nutrition aspect of things I think I'm very oh story arc before kids, I used to tell all parents that their kids aren't an excuse for the reasons they can't stick to some kind of nutrition plan. I was that kind of dickhead coach and I did it for ages. And then I became a parent and I went back and reached out to everyone I coached nutritionally and that was a parent and said, sorry, <laughs> I was completely wrong. Cause I was very much like a paleo carnivore, carb backloading, all those really crazy ass diets. They're not crazy. They, they work when you have capacity to do them. Let's say that. So I use that analogy of a stress cup. And all stress goes into this cup. And for parents, our cups are always really, really close to full all the time. So th- that's why the five minute rule works. You put a little bit, you pour a little, like training is a stress. Trying to do a really hard diet is a stress. And the reason why I say that, like, yes, you could be eating really healthy, but it's trying to do all that stuff around the family without it impacting the family. That's the shit that I talk to parents about. Like, that's really, really hard. You're using tons of willpower. I get it. If you can do it, then cool. It's awesome. But what happens when shit goes really bad when you're a red light? Can you still do it? What happens when you go on holidays? Can you still do it? So I'm always like, what is the least amount of friction to get the job done? And that's where that five minute rule. And I talked about this with you plenty of times, like this feeling for fat loss thing. And it's like, that's the first thing I start with. I'm like, all I need from you is five minutes at the end of the day. Give me, show me what you're eating. That's it. And then we do that for a week. We get awareness around what your general eating habits are do a weigh-in every week or whatever you want to do. I weigh in every day and use an app to smooth it out. And then you just make adjustments based off what you see. You're losing weight, yes, no. Reduce the food. And like I lean towards calorie tracking because with parents, I'm like, you need that family meal, that one meal every day where you're sitting down with your family and you're eating together. I think that's like super powerful. I was kind of dismissive of that for ages because when my parents broke up, we didn't really do that because we all ate separately. Mum worked nights, we cooked dinners. We just, we, everyone was doing their own thing. And then 
did that as I was growing up too. And then I met Kat and Kat's whole family is like family dinners. It's like this huge event. They could sit there for an hour and a half. And I'm like, I finished in like, would finish my meal in like five minutes. I'm like, what are we, what are we doing? We'll go, let's go do stuff. <laughs> What's this conversing thing? Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that family meal should be set. And we go, this is why I like calorie tracking. It's like, cool, eat whatever the family eats. If you're going to go out for ice cream, go out for ice cream. If you're going to have pizza, have pizza. Do whatever it is that your family does. And then you know you've got this calorie ceiling that you hit. You just fix all the other meals around it. And then over time, things will happen. You change quality for the meals you have control over, which is usually your brekkie and your lunch. So nearly 80% of the time, you're going to eat to a degree where the more optimal choices of food, they're going to make you feel good. But you just get to relax and eat whatever the family's eating. It's not like this, this forcing function of where you're trying to convince your family to eat the food you want. Cause you're like, I have to do this because of my diet. We're having steak and eggs for dinner. What about tomorrow? We're having steak and eggs. <laughs> what about tomorrow? We're having steak and eggs. <laughs> right. Like it just doesn't sit. Like I actually got a good mate who's doing the carnival diet now. And he's, he's getting good results with it as you do, because you take everything else out. I'm like, how's it going at dinner? And he goes, oh, it's pretty hard. So in my head, I didn't say anything. I'm like, yeah, it would be. And but yeah, I think like eventually he will get to a point where he's like, nah, I don't want to battle it anymore. Which is what I was like too when I did it. I tried carnival with kids and you just got to eat by yourself all the time and find time to cook your own food and all that kind of stuff. So calorie tracking for me, is to just to get awareness around how much you eat. You don't have to change anything. Five minutes a day. It's not going to be super accurate. I actually did a video about this on my um, socials today. Like it's not going to be accurate, which is okay. Just consistently five minutes a day, getting awareness around what you're doing and then make tweaks, little tweaks, five minute incremental tweaks, or in the case of food, make a little bit of a tweak, reduce portions a little bit. It sounds really simple, but it works so, so, so well. And I just like calorie tracking because it's just a good awareness tool. And I don't give two hoots what people eat. I was literally like, there's like calories and protein. And then outside that, I'm like, do whatever you want. Eat whatever you like. I don't really care. Do stuff that is the least amount of friction that allows you to keep doing this for as long as we can until we get the goal. And it just works. Once they buy into it and just let go of the expectation of like, I need to be this awesome Uber paleo eating Neanderthal. They just, they just, they relax and it's chilled and there's no friction. So this is, that's the way I do it. I'm curious for you because you do lean in, lean away from calorie tracking with your parents. So this would be a good conversation for people to listen to. How do you do it? Yeah. So I, be- I haven't looked like too much into it. I believe there it's a, it's, it's a similar to something that's like, that's out there. Essentially I'm asking people to like weigh their food. Um, mm-hmm. and, and that, and there, there is freedom in there. So I'm asking people to at least weigh their food. Cause I, I want to, I want to help them see what portions are like, because my two goals in the beginning are not only just helping you get weight loss, but it's also to help you be healthy. Um, and I, I like to share that let's work on these simultaneously. So meaning, uh, and just to clarify for people, you can lose weight eating in a caloric deficit, but eating junk. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. so I like yeah, to yeah. just preface that like, and I know, like, I know you had said like, it doesn't matter what they eat. Um, yes, based on the science, it does not matter what you eat within that caloric deficit that's going to help you lose weight. But I'm also trying to get people to feel better, be healthy. And so I'm trying to help them build portions. So when it comes to the different macros, the protein, the carbs, and the fat, we're doing some measurement. Um, You're not actually tracking every calorie. Uh, I found, at least with the people I worked with, that was really, really stressful for whatever reason. Um, And there's reasons why that might have been stressful for people. Um, And so... Uh, we use we use portions. So I'm I'm using their weight, their height, their activity level, um, and I have kind of like these calculations done for the for the amount of portions that they should be eating per macro per meal. 
Um, in each plan, the person has an opportunity each day to take one of the meals and replace it with something that they want that is right around a certain number of calories. So um, they also have the freedom to move some of those those portions around. So if they know that they're going to have a bigger dinner or, or want some freedom in dinner, hey, like here's your opportunity at lunch to maybe not eat so many carbs and just can, you know just kind of use those portions for later on. So I'm not asking people to be perfect. I'm not asking people to follow it like roughly 80%. Like I want you to be about 80% on board. Like you said, control your breakfast and control your lunch, which is mainly what we can control. And if you're doing that consistently enough, and you're not overindulging because with the amount of food that I, that the portions provide is is a, is enough food to feel hungry all the time um, or feel full all the time, then like again results are going to happen. So there is some weighing there. There is some. I want people to see how to build a plate. I want them to have a better understanding of like what that actually looks like, um, and also walk away being really surprised that you can eat a lot of whole foods <laughs> mm. a lot more than you think. And so it's just getting into the, I, I want people to get into those habits. And then I just break down, like, like you said, like kind of, I don't want to say where are we falling short, but where are we? What, what friction point did we reach um, within this plan? And mm. how do we, how we, you know, just discuss moving past that friction point, I guess. Um, so yeah, it's portions. I'm using portions in, in short and you know, working <laughs> to help people. <laughs> We can help people build up, uh, you know, their awareness around uh, uh, portions. So and I think it's a good it. conversation to have. Like, it's kind of like there's the the way I try and do it is like the least amount of friction. Well, let's say it's super flexible. Mine's like like it's literally flexible dieting to a degree. Like, once you mine's calories, protein, and whatever you like. So there's like flexible on one side, and then the original term was rigid, but I kind of like. It's more like rules, rules on the other side, which is very similar to what yours is, like portions, weigh and measuring, that kind of stuff. So it's like you're going to bounce between the two. This is super normal. So anyone listening, this is normal. You will swing to a really flexible approach and you'll get results for a while and it will stop. And then you will swing to a more rigid approach or rules-based approach and it will work until it stops. And then you'll swing back. The swing is normal. And the idea of like, like, cause I do that bounce too. Like what you said, I swing people over the portions if they get just bored with tracking calories or they want to just focus on quality food. I'm like, cool, let's go over this way. This is how you do it. And you just like hand portions and build meals that way. And when they get a bit sick of that or life gets a bit crazy, I'm like, cool, let's swing back over here. So it's kind of like, I, I believe coaching is the bumpers that keeps people in line long enough to achieve the goal while they're bouncing from flexible to rigid all the time. So it's normal. Like it's very, very normal for people to go from a very flexible approach to nutrition. And they're like, this is the bee's knees. This is awesome. This is the best. I get eat ice cream and lose weight. And this is great. And then you, after a while you say like, I start wanting, I just want to feel really good. I just want to have some salad. It is swing over, over to the more rigid side, and you follow that rigid approach for a while. Rigid is not the right word. It's kind of I don't have a better idea, but it's rules based kind of thing, which is what I think my the portions and stuff is. And you think like um, a Terry Walls approach, which is like nine cups of veggies, and then you can eat whatever you like. It's kind of like it's it puts frameworks in place to allow you to lose weight and get healthier without having to track calories. And having a flexible approach. So yeah, like you can bounce between the two. And then the idea of like, I believe the coach is to stop the wild fluctuations left and right. You stay inside the bumpers and everything points you towards the goal. All paths take you there. It just depends on which path you want to take. And there is no right or wrong path. It's whatever suits you in the moment, in the time right now. So yeah, I think... I do think people bounce between the two and they think it's like one is better than the other. It's like, nah, it just suits the circumstance. Like I love all, and I do all of them. Like I track my calories and I weigh my food and I follow rules. I do all that shit because I know it, it works. So I can bounce between whenever I feel like it, like the like cat being away. I was like, going to be hectic. Doing the kids drop off, trying to get them to bed, showered, all that kind of stuff. We had pool swim as well. So I was like, pool, that's just going to be a flexible day. 
I'm just going to eat whatever happens and it stays to that. And then when everything's perfect and normal, I follow these, like these 10 rules of food that I follow, which is what I stick to as best as I can for energy and performance. So I swing to more of the rigid side. And when I do that, the sticking to my calorie number is easy peasy. It just happens by itself. And I just keep bouncing between the two, which is, I think, like if I think people listening right now will probably like, that's kind of frustrating. I just want to follow one thing for the rest of my life. And humans are random. We are so random. It's really hard to stick to one thing for the rest of your life because it probably won't work because life circumstances change and our behavior is the thing is that is that is that is so random so like nick peterson the guy we talk about bumpers book which is that idea of bumpers and he taught me that idea of like it's a spiral effect when you go from rigid to um flexible but the spiral keeps moving forward the whole time and you just swing in between them non-stop but he has the idea of like systems calories work 100% of the time science doesn't lie Human behavior is what stuffs it up. It's our behavior towards it is that makes it stuffed up. And the same with like portions and weighing and stuff like that. Like it works. Guaranteed. It works if we do. It's that whole rule. It works if we do. But right. it's human behavior that stops it being consistent. And the more pieces to the puzzle, the more human behavior reduces the success rate of whatever it is that we're trying to do. So I think if you lean into that idea of like, yeah, we're, we're humans, shiny objects is a thing. We're going to get distracted, all that kind of stuff. So if we can put our two together and Frankenstein them, my, the way I like to look at it is like, cool, red light is calorie tracking. Just do whatever you got to do to get through the day. Like if your kids are in hospital and you got to eat the hospital cafeteria food, that's cool. Just track it. And then the expansion on that is like your approach, that more healthy, holistic foods that will make you feel better and make it easier to stick to the weight loss you get anyway. And it's kind of like how I would Frankenstein them together. Like you always have that safety net of like, cool, if anything ever goes wrong, all I've got to do is track my calories and stick to my calories. Like if it's a really, really stressful, moving house for one example. Like we moved house at Christmas just before Chrissy and I did it all myself with a trailer. Like we didn't get a cut, a truck or anything. So I just ate everything and I just tracked it. I was like, didn't care. I was just like, whatever I could find, whenever I could get it. It was like over a week. And I come out at the end of the week. I was doing lots of movement, but I actually come out at the end of the week lighter than I was at the start of the week. Because I just stacked to those, stuck, stuck to those rules. Like once I hit the rule, that's it. And then it's the week after, because I just ate whatever I wanted. I was like, I want good food. So I literally just had salad and kimchi and sauerkraut with meat for a week, just to reset back. So was, the swing is completely normal. It's really, I think if we set that framework in people's minds that, yeah, you're going to swing, like your behavior is going to, you're going to get distracted by stuff. If you build your system, this is like I like. This is what I love to do. I love building a system with people that works for them, where the safety net is so easy. It's stupid, like it just feels dumb. Like this isn't really going to work. I'm like it's going to work. Trust me. Like that's why we do it. So that's like the safety nets there, the mini, and then everything Come above on. that is just makes it so much better. Like it, it brings the so the safety net guarantees. The, I keep pointing over there. It guarantees the goal. <laughs> Um, I'm over there. Yeah, it guarantees the goal eventually. And then everything else you do on top of that safety net is just going to allow the goal to come to you faster. So it compacts time and it makes the process more enjoyable, which I think if you if people look at it like that, it's good. Like flexible dieting is good. It works. But if you swing like to 80, 20, like I sit around 80, 20, 80% of the food are 
mostly whole foods. I'm a big like fermented foods guy. That's where I get most of my veggies from. Um, and I feel really good doing that. So I can feel good while I'm moving towards the goal, which is a big thing. And we've completely moved away from the five minute rule, but the, I think it still kind of works. Like when you stack them and stack like the safety net is your, that's why it's good to have five minutes. That's your safety net. It's guaranteeing you to get the goal no matter what. It's just, you just got to give it time. And then everything you do above that is it brings the finish line in closer. It compacts time. And I think if you set those standards, it works really well. Works really well. It's hard, it's it's hard to go back. It's hard to go back. Like the only way that you do is, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 You just cut it out a little bit. Okay. I'm my brother's over here. So. Um, yeah, it's hard, and it's once you once you get those systems in place, it's it's hard to it's hard to go back. It's hard to once you become like conscious of everything. It's um, it's a cool place to be because you can still go enjoy yourself. You can still mm-hmm. swing to, and this is what I love to get. You know, the feedback from clients. I want to make. Oh, we lost you. Yeah. Like, we lost you completely. Then no sound coming out. <laughs> it was going to be awesome too. I bet you it was the best thing you've ever said. It is. Can you hear me now? Yes. And th- that is how you stay young forever. <laughs> <laughs> that is the elixir. This is for you. That was my password to my millions of dollars of Bitcoin. Huh? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Oh man. Anyways, I, all I was saying was, uh, it's once you become conscious of it and aware of it and you see how that system works, it's really, really hard to go back in the opposite direction. Um, yeah. and at the same time, what I love about this approach is how lions go on vacation and mm. they come back and they're like, I didn't lose any or I lost some, I didn't gain any. And they're just super surprised by it. And I'm like, yeah, you know, in reality, we probably just gave you like a, a, a refeed week, um, mm-hmm. it, which is really good for where you're at in, in regards to this deficit. So you, we gave your body a break. You didn't care. We gave your mind a break because you're not, you know, so focused on it. Um, but anyways, it, what I was actually re- referring to was the, the freedom uh, of being able to swing that way and, and enjoy yourself and not see all these like negative changes, if you will, in your body, because you went out and, you know, had some freedom. Yeah. I think to swing it back to the five minute rule, something just popped in my head and I was like, if you look at it like this, this will make way more sense. It's not so much about your Hail Mary days, your elite days. It's more about reducing the amount of shit days. So if you bring up your floor, which is like the the shitty days, like you bring the floor up, everything above it is going to be amazing. And this is a, this might sound weird if you're listening, but if say like in January, like a better idea, let's say we just use training in training in January, you trained two times a week. And they were like for maybe five, 10 minutes. So the benchmark to beat is eight for the next month. You raise your floor. So get nine. And if you just keep constantly, this is the idea of the safety net. The safety net is just, yeah. And this five minute rule is to raise the floor, reduce the amount of shit days, collect proof that you're winning and you're going to guarantee the goal much more than the big hail mary days when you like start a crazy like crazy ass diet and it, and you rock it out for three weeks and then you disappear for six months like if there's a five minute version of that that allows you to do that consistently for a whole year awesome so I'll, I'll, again i'll use myself as an example the last year i've been like 
moving between different kind of diets and following my rule of 10, the food plan and that kind of stuff. But I was struggling to get like consistent training in around dad life. And I was like, I just, I just want to not think about it. So I'm going to recommend an app for everybody. Macro Factor. It's an app that has an algorithm that coaches you on how much food you eat. Give it the data. You give it your weighing, weighings. It will tell you how much your energy expenditure is. So like how much you burn every day based off your movement. And it will change your calorie targets every week based off the data you give it. So I was like, cool, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to completely let myself go to that. I'll eat my rule of 10 and I'll be flexible as well. I was like, my goal is to lose 0.5 a kilo a week. So that would be 12 kilos in a year. So I was like 92 or something. And I was getting back into soccer. And it was the five minute rule. I just tracked five minutes a day. I was like, I'm not tracking every meal at the time. I'm just going to track at the end of the day with what I remember. And I was shit. I was terrible at tracking on purpose. I didn't want to be awesome at it. I just wanted to do it. And then in that year, I lost the 12 kilos and it was literally on the last day. Like we were going away for Christmas the day before I weighed in, I was 85 kilos and I did that through a soccer season. So I lost six before the season started and then sort of leveled off during the season and then lost six after the season. And that's the power of a five minute rule. So when you think about this, because we'll have to wrap up soon. It asks a better question. If I've only got five minutes, what is going to be the biggest bang for my buck for that five minutes? It's like Dan John has this idea of the prisoner's dilemma. If you can only exercise for 15 minutes a week outside, what are you going to do? So same kind of thing. If you got, if it's five minute, if it's a five minute effort or it's a five minute thing, it creates a better question in your head. What is this five minute thing that's gonna absolutely give me the best outcome I can get in five minutes? Which I think is kind of cool. I love it. Anything else you wanna add to that? I think that's a good place to to wrap up and a way to bring it all the way around so people can have a better understanding, you know? And I think the more analogies and examples that we can provide, um, make it easier and I know the, the more we hear something the more it'll set in um, mm. I just the one thing I would as far as an actionable step for people is just take a moment right now and or whenever you have the time right after this after you listen to us um, spend five minutes <laughs> looking at what what um, what what would move the needle forward what what is five yeah. minutes a day to you right now um, and how and how can you know we start to and we would love to hear we would love to hear what yeah. you chose so if you're listening um, wherever we are on on whatever platform but you you have our handles and you have a way to reach out to us that we would love to hear from you like what what do you plan on doing um, after you listen to this what is going to be your five minute rule what's going to be within your five minute rule and help you move towards your towards your goals so yeah and if you're unsure. Probably, reach out if you don't know what to do for, like, yeah. what to put in that five minutes we love this stuff so and we've got a uh, we've both got toolboxes of heaps of things that we can give you if you want them so reach out ask a question I don't know what to do for the five minutes you'd be like cool what's the goal yeah this is probably be the best thing it'll take no time at all it was awesome thanks Todd that was a good one thank you see you guys